What is going on, my fitness junkies? Hope everyone's getting back after Easter, getting after it, having a great week. Hope you're having a happy hump day. Uh, this topic was brought to us by Mark. So thanks, Mark, for, for coming up with this one. We kind of put our minds together on this one. But I've talked about focus in the past. I've talked about you know ways to increase focus. I've obviously talked about ways to optimize your biology. <clears throat> but we came up with the topic of just biohacking. That's a word that you'll hear on the internet a lot these days. So that, that's the topic for this one, biohacking and basically increasing your focus. So let's dive right into it, guys. And plot twist, what is biohacking? Uh, it's pretty much, you know, the, the definition of it is like hacking your body like a computer. That's literally like something you'll see on the internet. People are saying like biohacking, like reprogram your body, which honestly is complete hogwash. Okay, I'll, I'll be completely honest. Like that's kind of the, the plot twist of this is like, I, I'm not, I don't think it's a, a thing that is real. Okay, so you can't really reprogram your body to, to burn fat or build muscle, you know, become healthier, have a ton of energy. There's no way you can like literally act like your body's a, a computer and put in a cheat code and, or, you know, a computer game, put in a cheat code and like, you know, optimize that type of stuff. But what you can do is you can improve your mindset and there's ways to optimize your habits to make things a lot easier on yourself. So that's basically what we're going to be talking about. So biohacking kind of BS. Um, but there are ways to improve your mindset and improve uh, and optimize the habits that you're doing to make things a little bit easier on yourself. So piggybacking off of that, you're probably noticing a trend that, you know, there aren't shortcuts. You shouldn't look for quick fixes. If, if you're looking for like the quick fix and the shortcut, there's, there's a bigger issue that we need to address because that's not something that you need to have a mindset about like you, you shouldn't be looking for the quick fix you shouldn't be looking for the corners to cut you shouldn't be looking for like what's the the easy quick way to get there so that i can be you know just get there it, it that's something that we need to address to your mindset like we we don't want to be looking for quick fixes that's not what we want okay what we do want and what what you can do however is you know make things a little bit easier on yourself there's no need to make things harder on yourself i'm not the type of person to sit here and say like you know there's certain fitness coaches they're going to be like everything needs to be hard. Like, you know, it's just like this grind mentality. I'm not like that either, but you know, I don't think you should look for quick fixes. Um, but, and I, I think there are ways to make things a little bit easier on yourself. And I'm not the type of person that's going to be like, you know, there's, you just, you need to feel the pain to, to reach the results. It's not necessarily true. Like, you know, it's not always going to be comfortable, um, but it's kind of somewhere in the middle. So, you know, you don't need to like grind your head off and, and like never get sleep and like you sleep when you're dead, like, you know, nothing like that. Nothing, nothing like no pain, no gain. I mean, there, there is going to be some pain, um, but, but don't look for like the sh really short corner cutting quick fixes. Um, what I'm really getting at is like, there's, there's no shortcuts, um, but you don't, you can make things a little bit easier on yourself. All right. So ways to make things easier when it comes to fat loss. Okay. Ways to make fat loss easier. One tool that I've talked about numerous times, but if like I'm in a leaning phase, intermittent fasting honestly makes things in my opinion, a lot easier. Um, it makes it so that, you know, when you're, when you're in that eating window, it, I feel super full. And when I'm outside of that, I don't really think about eating. It just feels like, you know, I, I get used to it. My body kind of gets used to it. So that, that's a tool that I've used to, to make fat loss a lot easier when I'm leaning out or when my clients are leaning out a lot of times. Um, this is something that you're going to see on every single slide today, pretty much is just getting great sleep, but getting great sleep is going to help with fat loss. You know, getting great sleep is going to help with a ton of things. So you need to get those seven to nine hours. All right. Um, focusing on the resistance training and the diet, as opposed to like trying to do a ton of extra cardio and stuff like that, that's going to make it easier. Um, so that's why I'm so big on the resistance training, because that's just the easiest way you know, if you, if you just focus on the resistance training, burn your calories that way, while you're also doing enough to, to maintain muscle, and then just focusing on the diet side, that's what's going to make fat loss super easy. Okay, so don't overcomplicate it. But again, don't look for like shortcuts either. But if you're focusing on those main things, that's going to make it as simple as possible for you. Okay, another thing is focusing on NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis. 
And what this is, is basically everything that you're doing throughout the day, that's not deliberate exercise. So things like literally getting up, walking around, getting a drink of water, you know, taking a, taking a walk to, to go get your mail, you know, any sort of activity, like literally me standing up instead of sitting down, like all these activities you're doing throughout the day. That's not the, the exercise. That's also still burning some calories. If you could find ways throughout your day to increase those things, that's obviously going to make fat loss a lot easier because you're just going to burn more calories without having to actually exercise a lot more. So the, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis or neat, like if you can put a little bit more time into thinking about ways that you can increase that, then that's going to help you burn fat easier. Okay, another thing, and the, these couple of studies I've talked about in the past, but literally having a, a more positive mindset towards the habits, you know, having a more positive mindset towards exercise and eating right, you can literally change the way your your body is reacting to what you're doing if you have a positive mindset to it. So, you know, a study that I've talked about in the past, and I'll talk about it again, this milkshake study, they, they gave the subjects, um, they gave half of them a shake and told them that it was like a milkshake, like an indulgent shake. They, they told the other half that it was a, uh, like a, a protein shake or like a healthy shake. Um, and really it was the same exact shake. It was actually somewhere in the middle. It was like 300 something calories. Um, but it, they gave them both the same shake. They just told the different groups that it was something different. And they found that the, what they told each group like that affected the way their body actually react to the shake, even though it was the same shake. They're literally like their ghrelin hormone was different. So that's like your hunger hormone. They actually saw that the people they told it was a healthy shake. Um, they actually uh, had a, more of a ghrelin response. So they were still hungry after drinking the shake. The people they said that it was an indulgent shake or like an unhealthy shake, they, they didn't have that hunger response. So they, they felt more satiated, which I thought was super interesting. And kind of counterintuitive, but literally like having a certain mindset towards what you're eating even can, can affect the way your body reacts to it, which I thought was super interesting. And then um, the other hotel study I've talked about also in the past, but this was done on uh, hotel workers or like cleaning ladies. Um, obviously they, they do a lot of, of this neat we're talking about the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Like they're getting a lot of exercise that's not really deliberate exercise, but they're, they're just burning a lot of calories with the work that they do, you know, with cleaning and going up and down the stairs and pushing around carts and all that type of stuff. So what they did in this study was they, they told half of the, the subjects or the cleaning ladies, what they were doing. They literally just told them like how many calories they're burning, you know, all this stuff. They just made them more aware of what the type of work was doing for, for like their exercise and like how much calories they're burning and what it was, what it was actually having an effect on with their body. They just made them aware the other half, they just had them go about, you know, what they're doing. They didn't really tell them anything, but they just still followed them in the study. What they found was the group that what, who they told what they were doing saw like a bunch of results. Like they saw they were losing weight. They were feeling better about you know, even their mindset and like what they do for work. They, they saw like all these positive benefits. Um, as opposed to the group that they didn't like tell any of the, the effects to like, they didn't say how many calories they were burning and stuff like that. They didn't see these results. So literally just being aware of what you're doing and knowing that you're burning calories, knowing that you're doing stuff um, that's helping your physiology is going to help your physiology even more. So super interesting stuff and, and pretty eye opening on the way that literally you think about exercise and eating right affects your body in a different way, depending on what your mindset is towards it. So ways to make building muscle easier. <clears throat> These are a little bit more kind of tactical tips um, or practical. So this, this has to do with both building muscle and, and losing weight. Um, but I feel like with building muscle, it's a little bit even more important because you're just eating so much more. Uh, but meal prepping all of your protein, your stable carbs, just making that super easy, making those habits really in place, making it super simple on yourself is going to help you a lot. Like if you can just, you know, literally just dial it down to being super as simple as possible with like making all those protein um, meals for the week, making all the, all the carbs that you need for the week, that's going to help you stay on track, make it a lot easier to eat when you're eating so much to build muscle. Okay. And meal timing is more of an impact when you're trying to build muscle. That's why I actually usually don't recommend intermittent fasting. If your main goal is, is building muscle, 
Um, so knowing good meal timing techniques, I mean, you know, eating every two to five hours is a good rule of thumb with that to, to maximize building muscle. Also eating around the workouts. So optimizing the fuel you have for the workout and the recovery you have after the workout, that's probably, you know, eating every two to five hours and then the, the meals surrounding your workouts. That's probably the most important thing as when it comes to timing. Um, so just making sure you do that and practice those, you know, make it easier on yourself. If you're not eating for 10 hours at a time, like it's going to make it a lot harder on you to, to build muscle. So make sure you're, you're using those techniques and eating strategically. Um, focusing on effective reps. And again, this is, you know, it's going to help with, even if your main goal isn't building muscle, but focusing on effective reps for building muscle, like that really is like the main thing that's going to drive muscle growth. So getting to the point where you're getting near failure on your sets, you know, that's, that's really like, if I just had to dial it down to like one thing to focus on during your workout, that's what I would say. Like, if you're trying to build muscle, like get to a point where you're having effective reps, which means you're getting near failure on those sets. Okay. And then getting plenty of sleep again, you know, if you, if you're just breaking down your muscles all the time and you're not sleeping, then you're not recovering. You're not building those muscles back. Okay. So if you're not getting plenty of sleep, then you're literally just tearing down your muscle fibers and you're not recovering. Okay. And so, you know, a lot of people, I feel like with building muscle, they would, they just want the supplement that's going to help them build muscle. There's no real shortcuts with it. Honestly, like creatine is probably one of the, the best that you can do. And that, that is going to do a decent amount. Um, but you know, even that is not like a, you know, you can't just take creatine. You're going to gain a ton of muscle, but it is going to help. That's probably the best one. And I try to recommend it to pretty much all of you guys. Um, but you know, if you're trying to look for like a quick shortcut supplement, that's going to help you gain a little muscle. It just, it doesn't exist. I'd be taking it, but sorry. <laughs> so, all right, cool. So increasing energy and focus. So this is probably the most like biohacking thing we'll talk about with this. So for me, one strategy I've found, and again, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive to what I was just talking about, because I know like I'm trying to build muscle right now and I'm actually still do intermittent fasting sometimes, but I've kind of adjusted it so that my eating window isn't as, isn't as uh, restricted, but doing intermittent fasting and then having caffeine in the morning equals a focused cade. Yeah, it really does. Like that, that's something I've found like in the morning when I'm fasted, drink a bunch of water, you know, for the first 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and then I get my caffeine like 90 minutes after I wake up. That's like the time where I'm like locked in. I'm super focused. The caffeine hits you a little bit harder when you're fasted. Um, and yeah, so that's just that little trick right there, like being fasted and, and adding in caffeine that keeps me really focused. That's when I'm like super dialed in, like nothing can distract me at that time. Okay. So that, that's one thing that's helped me. I found that that, that does help my productivity. That's one reason why I like intermittent fasting a lot, um, for kind of more of the, the mental benefits to it, honestly. Um, but again, to like, it's kind of, it's tough because I'm, I'm usually trying to gain muscle as well. So sometimes I'm not as strict on myself with intermittent fasting. So, but it does for the mental benefits. I love it. All right. Um, getting up and moving every like one to two hours. So you, you really can only focus on something really well for like 90 minutes at a time. So honestly, like you're actually going to be more productive if every 90 minutes or so, every one to two hours, you know, get up, move around, get the blood pumping. Um, you know, you're, if you're just trying to work like hour, hour after hour after hour, your, your focus is actually going to start dwindling. You're not going to be able to focus as well for that amount of time. So you might as well just take a little small break, you know, a couple of minutes two, three, five minutes, get up, walk around, get, get the blood pumping a little bit, you know, maybe do the stretching or self myofascial release. I, that's why I keep my lacrosse ball by my desk. I'll go up against the wall, kind of work out some kinks from just sitting in the desk or standing all day and stuff like that. So, you know, getting up, moving around, getting the blood pumping a little bit, that's actually going to increase your focus, not only because the blood is pumping, but also just because when you take that small break, you're actually able to, to focus better in those like 90 minute chunks. Okay. And again, told you it's going to be on like every slide sleeping, All right, you just got to get the sleep. Like if you have bad sleep, your focus is not going to be there. Your energy is not going to be there. So having the sleep is going to be huge with energy and focus. Okay. Hydrate super well. I've, I've seen like man, like if I'm dehydrated, like it, it's super hard for me to focus. That's why like the first thing I do when I wake up, when I always talk to you guys about stacking wins in the morning, one of the wins I stack up is like not, not just this bottle. I have one big, um, 
bottle thing that I have, like right when I wake up, I drink the whole thing. That's like my first win for the day that I'm stacking. It's like, it just feels good. It starts, gets, gets the, gets me hydrated. It just makes me feel better overall in a lot of different ways. So hydrating, obviously eating well and working out, these things are going to increase your focus. There's literally mental benefits, chemicals released in your, in your brain. Like if you're eating well and you're working out, like that's going to increase your energy and focus. Okay. <clears throat> this one's big for me. And I, I always talk about writing your to do's, but just like time blocking times. And like, this is knowing that this is the time I'm supposed to be doing these specific things and then eliminating the distractions outside of that. Literally just, I feel like knowing what you're supposed to be doing for that chunk of time helps your productivity and your focus on what you're doing. Okay. So literally time blocking things, knowing what you're going to do for certain hours a day and eliminating the distractions outside of that. Um, this is kind of related to the first thing I said with knowing your golden hours or kind of knowing trends for yourself. So like for me, like I said, like in the morning, after I get hydrated, after I have that caffeine, like those next four hours, I'm like a hundred percent locked in. Those are like my most pro productive times of the day. So I know that those are kind of my golden hours. That's when I know I'm going to get the most done. That's when I know my, my brain's going to be firing. That's when I know I'm, I feel like I'm just super locked in. That's usually when I reach out to you guys. That's when I have a lot of calls with you guys. That's when I'm just trying to get a lot of stuff done. So within those like kind of four hours, I know those are kind of my golden hours. So know, know those times for yourself, know kind of when you operate well and, and kind of like use that to your advantage. I can't see what I wrote here. Man, can I hide this thing? Sorry, guys. I don't even know what I wrote right here because um, my, my like notes are in the way. Um, sorry. I don't know what I wrote. Optimize your dopamine. Oh, yeah. That's an important one. Thank you. Yeah. So optimizing your dopamine. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Optimizing your dopamine. This is like, this could be probably a whole topic in itself. <clears throat> but what what I mean by this is like there's ways to get super cheap dopamine hits and that's going to cause you to have really you know high spikes in your dopamine your reward, reward centers in your brain so like stuff like scrolling social media tiktok you know binge watching netflix um eating junk food things that cause a really high spike in quick dopamine you know you're going to get that quick spike but it's going to follow a, a by a, a crash in your dopamine and it's also going to make it harder to get dopamine hits from other things that you're doing. So typically, you know, if you're not getting really, you know, like back before there was even social media and stuff like that, like people got more dopamine hits from like getting things done. So it made it even harder now. It makes it harder for us now to get dopamine and reward from doing the things that we're supposed to be doing. That's why it's made it so much easier to be distracted. Okay. So like literally like you know, you get dopamine and reward from completing tasks, um, from doing work. So this is something I, I think about all the time. Like literally I was thinking about today, I was creating content and I was like, man, I do not feel like doing, doing this right now. Like I didn't, didn't like out loud or consciously think about this, but I, I can, I can like look back and see that I was thinking about this now. It's like, man, I'd rather just like scroll and look mindlessly through social media or something like that. <clears throat> but you know, I, I know that if I do that in that moment and I give in and I get that cheap dopamine, then it's going to make it a lot harder to focus on, on the stuff that I actually need to be doing. So, you know, I focused in, made sure I did it, you know, and kind of like maybe took a few minutes to get in focus on what I needed to do. But once I started doing that and I got that done, you know, you literally get some dopamine from completing that task. So instead of getting the cheap dopamine from <clears throat> quick hits whether it's social media, you know, something easy, something mindless that you're looking at, that's just going to give you a quick dopamine hit, or even like, um, you know, junk food, um, you know, getting that dopamine from things that you actually know you want to be doing to, to put you further and in, in being productive. Um, so not only that, like work related, but also like eating. So if you basically like if you're eating junk food all the time and you're just getting like quick dopamine, like, you know, you're getting the reward from eating bad stuff, then literally like eating meal prep is not going to taste like it's going to taste terrible because you're just not like you're basically priming yourself for bad food and just like getting that junk that gives you that quick dopamine that doesn't make you actually feel good in the long run. Okay. But like for me, like I like eating my really bland, you know, 
ground turkey and chicken and rice and <laughs> and sweet potato just because it's what I'm used to. It's kind of just what I stick to. You know, I, I feel like it it satiates me. I feel good. And I don't like give myself junk food all the time. So it's not like I'm really like having withdrawals from that type of stuff in a way. So it, it relates to that. It can even relate to working out. I mean, you know, if we all know like working out, it's going to give you that, that, that dopamine and those rewards at the end. Um, you know, it's kind of like delaying your gratification, but you know, if, if you skip that, if you, if you get cheap dopamine instead of that, you know, if you're just getting cheap dopamine hits, instead of going to the gym, um, you know, that it's not going to make the gym as, as rewarding basically. So super interesting to me. Um, that's something I've been looking into a lot. Uh, but one thing too, real quick, uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't recommend pre-workout for a lot of you guys, because early on, I don't know, I probably haven't told a lot of you this, but I was on like the most potent pre-workout <laughs> on the market. It's actually banned now. Um, like when I first started working out, when I was like 15, 16 years old, I was taking this pre-workout. It was called Jack 3D. It was insane. It had an ingredient and it called it um, M MDMA or something like that. Like it's, it was, it's literally a drug now that's banned that was in this pre-workout. So um, I say all that to say like, pre-workout, even if, though it doesn't have that ingredient anymore, you know, it's still got ingredients that like help you feel really good. It's got the feel good ingredients, um, which, you know, if you're doing that to work out and you're just trying to make yourself work out, if like, if you need that type of stuff, you're going to become dependent. And then it's like, you're not really getting the reward from the workout. You're getting the reward from what you're taking to, to go work out. So, um, that's why I don't, one of the reasons why I don't recommend pre-workout for a lot of people um so yeah i've even tried to to not even drink caffeine in general before i work out every time because i know that then i become dependent on the caffeine for that so that stuff is interesting to me hope it hope you guys took some stuff away from that in summary you know biohacking you know i think it's basically bs um but obviously you see there are ways to to optimize things make things easier for yourself with fat loss we talked about it with muscle we talked about it you know, optimizing your energy and focus. I think that's maybe the most biohacky stuff I talked about in this. Um, but hopefully you got something out of that. Let me know if you guys have any questions on it. I didn't realize when I was going to talk, I feel like most of the time about the energy and focus stuff. Um, but I feel like that is more related to the topic. So hopefully that was interesting to you. Hope you hope you took some stuff away. Um, but yeah, this stuff is interesting to me. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you guys have any topic ideas. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to talk to my clients who are on the call. Um, let's have a great week, guys. Let's finish strong. Let's finish the challenge strong for you. For those of you that are doing the challenge, um, getting some great progress pictures. Like I said, it's got me fired up, um, but everyone's doing good. So just keep up the good work, guys. Let me know whatever on my end I can do to help serve you better. Um, but yeah, keep it up. Let's have a great rest of the week. Talk soon. Peace.